And I want to ask you, for the sake of our viewers, we are here at this beautiful venue, the Jerusalem Press Club. What is it? What do you do here? So first of all, I just I want to take you back for a second to what you were saying about about um, you know um, experience in working with the press. Right. Um, as an 18-year-old, it is it's it's easy to say, oh, the press should be reporting about this, and you know it sounds different to what my, my my own views are. But until you work with the foreign press on a day-to-day -day basis, it's kind of hard to understand both sides. So I think that's something that's important to to, to point out. Maybe we'll get back to it in a little bit. Uh, but the Jerusalem Press Club itself. Uh, has been around for almost a decade. It was founded by our director general, Uri Dromi, who was the spokesperson for the Rabin and Paris governments in the 90s, so he's, he's seen a lot. Um, he came to the conclusion that what was really missing uh, from, from the scene was a kind of home away from home for the foreign correspondents covering, covering Israel, uh, a place that would allow them to discover the country in the eyes of the individuals uh, who represent all of Israel's communities. and not limiting them to maybe politically tainted views or otherwise. Uh, and that's what we do here at the club every day. We conduct briefings, uh, tours, interviews, and even social activities for the foreign press covering Israel in the hope that we could actually bridge a kind of gap that has been created between existing assumptions about Israel and the experiences of those who actually live in it day to day or even those who choose to live in it. Uh, so that's what we do here at the club and I think we're doing a pretty good job. I have to ask you, um, just, just to make one point clear for our viewers, you are not an Israeli governmental no, agency. No, 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 absolutely not. Yes, I, I mean, we, we, were, we were established by somebody with experience in government, but I think it's that experience that helped him realize that there was, that there was really a vacuum for, uh, for you know, messages of Israel from the bottom up. Uh, we don't have any backing from the government. On occasion, we, you know, we can do some some joint programming, but um, all of our all of our donations come from, you know, uh, from Zionists abroad. Uh, and it's really important to make that clarification. We're entirely independent, and we like to keep it that way. I think that's what makes us credible in the eyes of the journalists. And for us as a team, you know, we have. We have varying views of, uh, between us. Uh, if, if an election were held today, I can tell you that uh, people probably would vote differently. We each come with our own views, and, um, and I think that's what gives us a lot of strength. And what's your relationship with similar organizations abroad? Similar organizations abroad. Who provide service for journalists. Mm. So first of all, I want to say that it's really important that this community is made up of a number of different organizations. God forbid there was a single organization working with the press, because that would just, you know, I don't think that would show uh, what the tr what true Israel really is. Um, in terms of our direct relationships with them, we have a number of joint programming. Um, a lot of times we'll we'll host delegations from. Uh, from different countries that are brought by different different NGOs, which I think is just is just really amazing because it allows us to really echo the message uh, rather than only being you know the sole the sole actor on the scene, uh, and really you know just just capitalize on the on the goodwill of all of the the really amazing work being done out there. You know there are various agencies working with international media. You have you can think off the top of my head about Israel's foreign ministry, about the government press office and others. What makes you stand out in the services you provide? What's the the gap that you're filling through the work that you do? Well, look, I think, first of all, obviously, every, every government needs its spokesperson. Oh, yeah. every, every office needs its official, official, um, official mechanisms. Uh, we're not a replacement of that. Um, you know, the GPO makes sure that journalists get what they need to get on the ground, all the, all the, uh, all the bureaucracy, bureaucracy documentation, yeah. things like that. Right. Um, and I know that they're very helpful with other things on occasion. They were very helpful during, during COVID. I can, I can say that uh, from, from close up. Um, but I think we give them something a little bit different that, that a government office can't offer them. Uh, again, what society brings towards, uh, towards, uh, towards the uh, story. And the, um, the, the kind of services that you provide, what do they need? When you're talking about these services that you provide international media, and I want to emphasize, it's not just media that's here in Israel, right? It's right. anybody in the foreign core who's interested in covering what's happening in Israel, even if they're not physically here. Right, so uh, I'll get to the audience in just a second, but first I'll address your first question on, on the, the services themselves. Um, it ranges from content uh, that is in English that we, we provide to them 
we, that we provide for them that they might not be able to access on their own. It uh, it comes services also come in the form of, of facilitating uh, facilitating interviews or facilitating um, uh, relationships connections between Israelis and themselves. It's getting it's helping them get to know stories or other kinds of uh, activities um, that they wouldn't have heard of. I would say that a lot of it comes with, from a language gap because you know as as good as the English level is of this country and a lot of people don't necessarily have that confidence to go on camera or or to go on the radio or whatnot and uh, we you know we kind of give them the nudge we give the nudge to the Israelis to to be in front of the in front of the news and then we are also because of our credibility are able to uh, to give uh, give the reporters that connection and you know we we've become a trusted source because of that and the, um, and, and then these, then we have relationships that build build on on top of the the other. If a journalist is, you know, has been in, the, in touch with the Jerusalem Press Club, has been a member of the Jerusalem Press Club for a couple of years, and knows that we're a credible source that can be helpful on the ground, then that journalist usually tells their replacement, "Hey, look, there's this institution that's been really helpful for me. Um, why don't you continue that relationship?" And that's something that we enjoy uh, over the years. Um, I want to ask you about something that you mentioned before in our conversation. There is a lot of frustration with many of our viewers, and, and many more, who view the international media coverage of Israel as biased, as problematic on so many levels, and there is a lot of complaining being done. But we have an opportunity, sitting with a real professional in the field, to ask you, how do you see this? Like, what is the, the source of this frustration? And what is your advice you may want to give people who are listening to you now from your vast media experience? What don't they get about international media in Israel? Well, look, at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, what is the role of the media? Is the role of the media to provide this perfect picture of, uh, of the country that they're covering? Or is the role of the media to, to really investigate and bring out the truth and show it to the public? I think that the, the purpose is the latter. Uh, whether they're doing that or not, I think ultimately, at, at least in 2022, I think we've come a long way, especially since the Second Intifada. I think, I think we've learned a lot, Israelis have learned a lot, the different institutions have learned a lot, the NGOs have learned, and, and, um, and I think the media has learned a lot too. The media knows about the importance of showing both sides of the story, and I think that's what we're here to do. We're here to help them see all the sides of the story. And look, to, to, to answer those who are complaining at the end of the day, um, be the story. If you don't like the story that's being shown, make sure that your messages are the ones that are being presented. If you have an amazing initiative, if you know about a certain project that's happening, you know, there's so many beautiful things going on in Israeli society, whether it's about um, coexistence, whether it's about diversity, whether it's just getting whatever message it is that you want to get out, then get out there. Be the story. What a wonderful ending note for our conversation. If you don't like the story, be the story, Talia tells us, which I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for your wise words and for hosting us in this auspicious and beautiful place. Thank you so much, Shachal. It's been a pleasure. And to you, I say this is all for this JBS special coming to you from Jerusalem. And we'll see you with much more content relevant for everything that you need to know about Israel and what's happening today. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Shalom and Leitraut.